As the third thunderbolt began to form in the sky, Jiang Chen hurriedly focused on recuperating his soul power. The aftermath of the second thunderbolt had left him with less than a third of his soul power intact. Roughly ten minutes later, the third thunderbolt struck. Although his armor managed to block most of its force, the power of this thunderbolt was significantly stronger than the previous ones, causing Jiang Chen considerable distress. As the ordeal continued with the fourth, fifth, and sixth thunderbolts, the intensity of the lightning grew increasingly terrifying. Even the slightest penetration of the lightning into his body caused Jiang Chen to convulse uncontrollably, a sensation beyond words. Despite the pain, he found a peculiar sense of satisfaction in the aftermath of the lightning strikes, especially in the moments of calm that followed. Could I actually be a masochist? Jiang Chen wondered, torn between amusement and dismay. After the seventh thunderbolt, Jiang Chen was utterly depleted, his soul power completely drained. Yet, the storm clouds above showed no signs of dispersing, weighing heavily on his heart. To make matters worse, as he was focusing on regaining his soul power, his protective armor vanished, leaving him exposed and vulnerable. Faced with this dire situation, Jiang Chen felt a sense of impending doom. His fears were confirmed as the eighth thunderbolt descended with a deafening roar, striking him directly. With only a fraction of his soul power restored, the impact of the thunderbolt was devastating. Without the armor's protection, the intensified lightning wreaked havoc on his body, shattering his meridians and leaving him riddled with wounds from which blood spurted. His body contorted in agony, unable to even scream, reduced to making guttural noises. It wasn't until the lightning's fury began to wane, absorbed by the corpse pill, that the immediate threat subsided. However, the aftermath was brutal, leaving Zhang Chen in a state of indescribable torment, his body and clothes torn apart. Incapable of moving even a finger, Zhang Chen lay there, staring at the still-threatening storm clouds. With no other options left, he resorted to using a blessing potion from his system. Instantly, a soothing sensation enveloped him, healing his wounds and repairing his meridians at an astonishing rate. The transformation from excruciating pain to blissful relief was so profound that Zhang Chen couldn't help but vocalize his pleasure. In mere seconds, his body was restored to its peak condition, save for the depleted soul power. However, the respite was short-lived as the ominous thunderclouds above signaled the impending arrival of the ninth thunderbolt. The sheer power of the eighth thunderbolt had nearly obliterated him. The thought of facing the ninth filled Jiang Chen with dread. With his soul power still lacking, Jiang Chen realized that his only hope lay in using a soul ring upgrade coupon, a desperate measure in these desperate times. In his current state, Jiang Chen pondered the utility of upgrading his soul ring. Even if he were to receive a soul ring of 10 years without any soul power, he couldn't utilize any soul skills. He was beginning to regret not using the soul ring upgrade coupon right from the start. Perhaps had he done so, the power of his skills might have increased and the consumption of his soul power could have been reduced, leaving him with some reserves. However, he knew all too well that regret served no purpose. There was no antidote for it in the world. He was uncertain about the number of thunderbolts still to come, but this ninth one seemed determined to chase him relentlessly. In a burst of desperation, he leaped up and sprinted towards the other side of the mountain peak. Yet, the storm cloud above seemed to have locked onto him, mirroring his movements with uncanny precision. I'm doomed, Zhang Chen muttered to himself, halting in his tracks. If escape was futile, why continue the charade? Resigned, he sat down, his mind racing through the memories of his two lives. Images flickered past, finally settling on the visage of old Jack, his face creased with wrinkles yet exuding kindness. If he were to perish here, he doubted anyone would discover his fate. Old Jack might forever wonder, perhaps waiting at the village entrance for a return that would never happen until time claimed him. The sky rumbled ominously, allowing Zhang Chen little time for sorrow. The ninth thunderbolt descended with a vengeance, a column of electric fury that enveloped him completely. Lightning illuminated the scene, stones scattered, and when the dust settled, all that remained was a scene of devastation. Minutes passed before the electric glow faded, revealing Zhang Chen's battered form. 
He looked as though he had been crushed under the weight of a massive truck, his body a gruesome sight with patches of skin barely clinging on. It took several moments for Zhang Chen's mind to thaw from the shock, slowly piecing together consciousness from the remnants of agony. By then, the storm cloud that had loomed so threateningly had dispersed, leaving behind a clear sky. Struggling to lift his head, he surveyed his shattered form with a sense of profound bitterness. Death hadn't claimed him, yet what lay before him felt scarcely different from the grave. His leg was shattered, his spine fractured, leaving him incapable of even sitting upright. A wry smile was all he could muster in the face of such devastation. The heavenly tribulation had proven its fearsome reputation. Never had he imagined his fate would be so dire. In the midst of his despair, the youthful voice of the system chimed in, Congratulations to the host for successfully surviving the first catastrophe. A grand gift package for transcending the tribulation is now available. Please proceed to check it. Hope ignited within Zhang Chen's eyes, previously dim with the shadow of death, now shimmering like a beacon to a drowning man. This gift package might hold the key to his salvation. Open it, open it, he urged silently, his heart pounding with anticipation. As he opened the newly acquired gift package, his eyes eagerly scanned the contents. Among them, a drop of Thunder Tribulation liquid promised the healing of any injury. The sight alone sent a tremor of excitement through him. Salvation was indeed within this package. Without hesitation, he chose to use the drop of Thunder Tribulation liquid. Suspended above him, a drop of liquid radiated a spectrum of colors, its viscosity reminiscent of the finest jade pulp, and it emitted an enchanting fragrance. Instantly, the mountain's flora burst into vibrant life, and the vegetation thrived. Taking a deep breath, Zhang Chen felt the pain that had enveloped his body vanish in an instant. As the liquid descended, he opened his mouth wide, eagerly welcoming the miraculous Thunder Tribulation liquid. The moment it touched his tongue, a delightful fragrance overwhelmed him, and his body shone with a radiant light. Bones mended and strengthened, meridians restructured and expanded, flesh and blood rejuvenated, and even his lost vitality was restored, gleaming with vigor. His burnt skin peeled away to reveal new, tender, yet resilient flesh beneath. A mane of thick black hair cascaded down, resting upon the boulder beneath him. With just a single drop, Zhang Chen was reborn. As the radiant light faded, he rose to his feet, shedding the remnants of his damaged skin. Standing there, in his renewed form, his astonishingly long hair trailed on the ground behind him. Carefully assessing his condition, a broad grin spread across his face. The formidable strength he had known returned, his body feeling even more robust than before. The surge of soul power within him now exceeded its previous limits. Consulting the system once more, he discovered his soul power had ascended to level 14. He smirked, acknowledging the narrow escape from disaster. The Thunder Tribulation Liquid had worked wonders, albeit with a modest enhancement to his soul power. Yet the relief of being alive outweighed any disappointment. After all, life was the paramount treasure. Now, with his spirits lifted, he resumed exploring the contents of the Transcending Tribulation gift package. Among them was Lightning Fist, 3,000 lightning moves. The prospect of mastering boxing and movement techniques sparked excitement within him. Despite his formidable cultivation and strength, his lack of actual combat experience had been a glaring weakness, one that had led to his previous defeat at the hands of Tang San. He had once dreamt of exacting revenge on Tang San after absorbing a spirit ring, but his plans had faltered doubting his ability to match Tang San's agility. The thought of facing defeat again was unbearable. Yet now, an unexpected opportunity for redemption had presented itself. Given the system's reputation for quality, the technique known as Sanchan Leidong promised to rival, if not surpass, Tang San's ghostly agility. As long as he could match Tang San in agility, he was confident that he didn't even need to rely on martial arts to defeat him. In his current state, his strength was a proxy, Adelie 2000 Jin, about 1,102 pounds. With the activation of his first soul ability, he could double this strength to over 4,000 Jin, and this was without even tapping into his soul power. He was convinced that if he could keep pace with Tang San, he could overpower him without the need for spirit abilities. 
Observing his long hair that cascaded to the ground, Jiang Chen felt a twinge of annoyance. After a moment's thought, he ingeniously wrapped his hair around his neck several times, fashioning it into a makeshift black scarf that rested on his chest. The sun was already dipping below the horizon, casting long shadows over the chaotic mountain peak. Deciding it was time to leave, he glanced back at the disarray one last time before setting off. On the rural path, Jiang Chen ran with unrestrained joy, his long black hair streaming behind him like a banner in the wind. His return journey was significantly faster than his outward trek, thanks in part to his choice of less traveled routes, ensuring he wouldn't attract unwanted attention. However, as he approached the outskirts of Holy Soul Village, he encountered a dilemma. At that moment, he found himself completely bare. Despite being only six years old, his modesty prevented him from walking into the village without any clothes. As dusk turned to night and the villagers retreated to their homes, Old Jack, leaning heavily on his cane, went from door to door inquiring about Zhang Chen's whereabouts. His aged face grew increasingly lined with worry. The sound of Old Jack's hoarse and frail voice calling out made Zhang Chen's heart ache. Seizing the cover of darkness, he hurried back home, hastily snipped at his hair with a pair of scissors, threw on his clothes, and dashed outside. Grandpa, he shouted into the void, receiving no response. Approaching the village entrance, he faintly caught the voices of Old Jack, Tang San, and Tang Hao emanating from beyond the village boundaries. Following the sounds, Zhang Chen eventually spotted the trio by the riverbank. There, Old Jack, alongside Tang Hao and his son, were conducting a search with oil lamps in hand, Old Jack's voice tinged with a hint of despair. Tang Hao attempted to offer some comfort. Village chief, don't worry, I'll dive in and take a look. Don't fret, Grandpa Jack, Tang San added, attempting to use his purple magic eyes to peer into the depths, but the water proved too murky. Tang Hao was about to strip down and brave the waters when he suddenly heard Zhang Chen's call. Relieved, he redressed and announced, Village Chief, Xiao Chen is here. Turning around, they saw Zhang Chen racing towards them. Upon reaching Old Jack, he halted, his face a mix of eagerness and relief. Old Jack's initial relief quickly morphed into sternness as he raised his cane and lightly smacked Zhang Chen. Where have you been, you little rascal? I ought to tan your hide. Zhang Chen stood still, absorbing the feeble hit, his heart swelling with emotion. Despite Old Jack's attempt to mask it, Zhang Chen could see the tears in his eyes. You didn't dodge, boy. Did that hurt? Old Jack immediately regretted his action, gently rubbing the spot he had hit. Shaking his head, Zhang Chen replied, It doesn't hurt, Grandpa. I'm hungry. Let's go home and cook. All right, let's head back, agreed Old Jack as they began their walk home. Over his shoulder, Old Jack thanked Tang Hao and Tang San. Thank you both for your efforts. It was nothing, they replied, following behind. Xiao Chen, where were you all afternoon? Old Jack inquired once more. Grandpa, I accidentally fell asleep on the mountain and only woke up after it was dark, Jiang Chen explained. Is that so? You had us all worried sick. I'm sorry, Grandpa. With the day's events behind them, Jiang Chen and Old Jack shared a quiet dinner. Afterwards, Jiang Chen turned his attention to the items within his system. Host, Duluo level 14, Zombie level, Soul 112, Soul of 100 Year, Soul Skill, Zombie God Armor. Props, Soul Ring Upgrade Coupon, 1120, Lightning Fist, Movement Technique, 3000 Thunders. His soul power had increased to level 14, but his zombie level remained unchanged. His gaze lingered on the last two items, especially intrigued by the movement technique. Upon selecting it for more information, the essence of 3000 Thunders flooded his mind, a technique as swift as lightning, capable of myriad transformations, promising extreme speed. However, instead of detailed steps or pathways, Zhang Chen's mind was bombarded with vivid imagery of lightning and thunder. Confused, he wondered about the promised intricacies of the technique. Where were the detailed movements and the promised rapid evolution? All he had were flashes of lightning, leaving him puzzled about the practical application of such a technique. He refused to believe in the concept of malevolence and ventured into the 3,000 thunders time and again. Yet each time he was met with a sight that resembled a spider's web made entirely of dense, intertwining lightning. 
He couldn't help but wonder, were these innumerable bolts of lightning the lil, legendary three thousand thunders? The sheer magnitude of the lightning was overwhelming, each bolt crackling with raw, untamed power that seemed to dance chaotically across the sky. The air was charged with electricity, making the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. It was a breathtaking display of nature's fury, both beautiful and terrifying in equal measure. Despite the danger, he pressed on, driven by a mixture of curiosity and determination. He had heard tales of the Three Thousand Thunders, of course, who hadn't. But to witness it firsthand was an entirely different experience. The stories had not done it justice. The reality was far more intense, more visceral. As he delved deeper into the heart of the storm, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to the Three Thousand Thunders than just a natural phenomenon. There was a rhythm to the chaos, a pattern to the lightning strikes that suggested intelligence, or at least intention. He paused, taking a moment to observe the lightning more closely. It was then that he realized the truth. The Three Thousand Thunders were not just a display of nature's power. They were a test, a challenge to be overcome by those brave enough to face them. With renewed resolve, he continued his journey, each step taking him closer to the heart of the storm. He knew that the path ahead would be fraught with danger, but he also knew that he had the strength to overcome it. After all, he had already faced the Three Thousand Thunders and lived to tell the tale. Zhang Chen took a considerable amount of time to emerge from his dazed state, wearing a wry smile on his face. The agility granted by the system proved to be a bit of a conundrum. Without a clear cultivation method, these lightning techniques were as cryptic as ancient scriptures, leaving him at a loss for how to proceed. With a heavy heart, he could only shake his head in resignation, setting aside the notion of immediately mastering the Three Thousand Thunders technique. Turning his attention to the lightning fist, he silently hoped it wouldn't be another baffling skill like the Three Thousand Thunders, which would drive him to the brink of madness. The lightning fist, despite its unassuming name, sparked a glimmer of hope in Jiang Chen. Upon accessing the technique, its description flooded his mind. The lightning fist strikes with the speed of lightning, its brilliance akin to the sun streaking across the sky, filled with overwhelming yang energy and unparalleled power. A vision of someone practicing the technique illuminated his thoughts, bringing him a sense of relief. This technique seemed far more approachable. The figure in his vision shone brightly, executing the moves with simplicity and grace. Zhang Chen couldn't help but feel puzzled again. The technique appeared almost too straightforward. Could the system really be playing a trick on me by offering such a basic set of moves, he wondered. However, recalling the previous rewards from the system, which despite their steep costs, proved to be immensely beneficial, Zhang Chen considered the possibility of hidden depths within this technique. His initial excitement subdued, he decided not to rush into practicing the lightning fist. Given that it was already night, he opted for a more serene activity. He quietly ascended to the rooftop, immersing himself in the essence of moonlight. The soul ring's absorption had cleared the bottleneck in his cultivation, rendering his being almost translucent. Nightly practice had become his sanctuary, a time of rejuvenation under the moon's gentle embrace, free from the need for rest. The following morning, after completing his routine run and breakfast, Zhang Chen retreated to his yard to delve into the boxing and footwork techniques bestowed by the system. Setting aside the enigmatic Three Thousand Thunders, he focused on the seemingly simplistic lightning fist. His memory served him well, allowing him to grasp the moves after a few mental rehearsals and physical attempts. Before long, he could execute the technique flawlessly from memory, his fists cutting through the air with formidable force. Old Jack, lounging on a nearby recliner, watched with enthusiasm, offering loud applause and cheers. After several repetitions, however, Zhang Chen sensed something amiss. The technique felt too mundane, reminiscent of the radio gymnastics from his previous life, lacking any semblance of majesty or dominance. The power behind each punch seemed solely the result of his own physical strength. Refusing to be deterred, he persisted, executing the technique ten more times, yet failing to uncover any unique aspects. Doubt crept in, 
leading him to wonder about the true nature of this boxing technique. Determined to find answers, he scrutinized the technique once more. This time, the figure in his vision transformed, revealing numerous luminous spots that interconnected with beams of light, sketching out a complex pathway. A moment of clarity struck Zhang Chen. So this is the true essence of the technique, hidden within these exercise routes, imbued with an indescribable allure. Suddenly, the once simplistic lightning fist revealed its profound and enigmatic nature. In Zhang Chen's eyes, the remnants of the system's teachings lingered, leaving a profound impression on his heart. He silently reviewed the exercise routine, ensuring its accuracy before executing a punch into the air. This was the inaugural move of the lightning fist technique. Previously, practicing it felt no different from a regular punch, but this time the effect was immediate and astonishing. As soon as his fist cut through the air, it became enveloped in electric arcs and a surge of formidable power erupted. Zhang Chen felt an unexpected strength coursing through his fist, propelling him forward uncontrollably. Caught off guard by this sudden force, Zhang Chen's expression turned to one of bewilderment. Just as quickly as it had appeared, the force vanished, sending him tumbling to the ground in a less than graceful manner. With a loud thud, his face made an intimate connection with the earth. Old Jack, who had been leisurely observing Zhang Chen's practice from his recliner, couldn't help but burst into laughter at the sight. Xiao Chen, soul masters possess unique skills, and you'll discover yours in time. But what exactly are you practicing now? I've never heard of anyone gaining strength by merely swinging their fists around. Zhang Chen, face smeared with dirt and feeling slightly dazed from the impact, rose to his feet. He stared at his fist, bewildered, as if it were an alien object. The sensation of his fist dragging him forward was utterly bizarre. Calming himself, he pondered whether this strange occurrence was the true power of the lightning fist. This realization reignited his excitement, and he readied himself to attempt the move once more. Old Jack, shaking his head in amusement, settled back into his recliner to continue watching Zhang Chen's antics. What followed was a series of comical mishaps. Each time Zhang Chen threw a punch, he was met with a powerful force that resulted in various awkward tumbles. Similarly, when he attempted a kick, his legs would not cooperate, leading to an involuntary split that left him in pain. Through these trials, Zhang Chen's determination did not waver. Despite the falls and the pain, he was driven by the potential of mastering the lightning fist, eager to unlock the strength that lay within. At times, my strength would betray me, leading to unintended consequences, such as hitting the wall. Initially, this caused me embarrassment, but soon, my interest peaked, transforming into sheer excitement. The boxing technique I was practicing was nothing short of extraordinary. Each punch unleashed a force so powerful and swift it seemed to propel me forward. It felt less like I was controlling the punches, and more like the punches were controlling me. Old Jack, witnessing yet another instance of me colliding with the wall, couldn't hold back his concern any longer. You child, enough with this recklessness. You've already cracked the wall. Is your head made of iron? He exclaimed. I glanced at the wall noting the cracks and the various holes pockmarking the ground, and a wave of embarrassment washed over me. Yet, beneath that embarrassment, a surge of excitement bubbled. Mastering this boxing technique could exponentially increase my strength. This realization reignited my curiosity about the Three Thousand Thunders. If the lightning fist was this remarkable, the Three Thousand Thunders must be equally, if not more, extraordinary. Grandpa, I'm going out to play. I announced, brushing off the dust from my clothes and ignoring my earlier embarrassment. I headed towards the secluded area by the river, determined to practice. At the riverside, I contemplated the three thousand thunders and inspiration struck. Eagerly, I began to experiment. The technique was agile and unpredictable, allowing for movements in any direction, imbued with a sense of unpredictability when applied to bodily movements. My initial attempts were challenging. Following my instincts, I tried to accelerate forward, only to abruptly veer off to the side, nearly injuring myself in the process. However, far from being deterred, this experience only fueled my excitement. I had begun to grasp the essence of the Three Thousand Thunders, its ability to change direction at seemingly impossible angles. The more I practiced, 
the more astonishing the feats I accomplished. I collided with trees, plunged into the river, yet at my current speed I could skim several meters across the water's surface. It wasn't until noon that I decided to head home, still pondering the incredible versatility of the 3,000 Thunders, though I had yet to fully master its speed. But I wasn't worried. My speed was already commendable, and I was confident it would only improve. Tang San, just wait. Give me a few more days of practice and you'll be begging for mercy, I muttered to myself, a sinister smile playing on my lips. For over two months, Old Jack had been trying to persuade me to join the Spirit Hall for training, but I steadfastly refused. Eventually, Old Jack had no choice but to seek a work-study opportunity in a neighboring village. I was determined to stick with my original plan of forming a team with Tang San, aiming for the chance to ascend to godhood in over a decade. More importantly, I had to consider my safety. Joining the Spirit Hall could potentially put me in danger from Tang Hao. Whether he would kill me or imprison me, I couldn't be sure. Thus, joining the Spirit Hall was out of the question. Three days passed, and with only one day left before our departure to Notting City, I decided it was time to confront Tang San. Tomorrow, we would set off, but today, I intended to challenge Tang San in a fair fight, seeking retribution for past grievances. After enduring the humiliation from their last encounter, Zhang Chen hadn't visited Tang San's residence for several days. Instead, he devoted nearly all his time to mastering the peculiar boxing technique and agility drills he had stumbled upon. Within three days, he had essentially mastered the strange punch, managing to stay upright without tumbling to the ground. Although learning the agility technique, known as Sangqian Leidong, proved to be a formidable challenge due to its complex twists and turns that nearly injured him, he made significant progress. By slightly reducing his speed, he could know who changed direction at most angles. Zhang Chen believed this level of mastery was sufficient. Since Sanchan Leidong didn't follow a set pattern and was more about understanding the underlying principle, he felt confident he could adapt his movements as needed. This newfound agility, he thought, would give him an edge over Tang San's elusive maneuvers. Zhang Chen's speed was remarkable. In just a few minutes, he had ascended to the mountain's peak, arriving just in time to witness Tang San concluding his training session. Tang San had always been concerned about keeping his cultivation practices a secret, even from his own father. The sudden appearance of Jiang Chen, therefore, sparked his annoyance. The Ziji Demon Eyes and Xuantian Kung Fu were his most closely guarded secrets, and he was prepared to go to great lengths to protect them, even if it meant taking a life. However, Tang San's irritation subsided somewhat when he realized that Jiang Chen had arrived after he had finished his exercises, which meant it was unlikely that his secrets had been exposed. What brings you here so early in the morning? Surely you haven't come to cause more trouble. Tang San inquired, his tone laced with suspicion. He couldn't help but recall the last time Zhang Chen had ventured up the mountain at dawn, an incident that nearly resulted in the desolation of the entire summit. The memory was still fresh in Tang San's mind, fueling his wariness. Jiang Chen flashed a bright smile, revealing two rows of pearly white teeth, and got straight to the point. I lost to you last time, and I want a rematch. Tang San raised an eyebrow, giving Jiang Chen a once-over with a half-smile. His tone dripped with a kind of disdain that made Jiang Chen's blood boil. Oh, are you sure about that? Hey, hey this time, I'll make sure you're the one crying, Jiang Chen retorted, a confident aura radiating from him. It was clear he believed in his newfound strength. Tang San's interest was piqued as he noticed the change in Zhang Chen. All right, let's see how much you've improved. Just don't give up as easily as last time. You won't be disappointed, Zhang Chen declared, closing the distance between them in the blink of an eye. Tang San shook his head, initiating his ghost shadow bewilderment technique. No matter how fast you are, it's useless if you can't outmaneuver me. Before he could finish, Tang San was caught off guard by a powerful kick to his rear, sending him flying forward. What was that? Jiang Chen asked, a playful smirk on his face. Tang San, after regaining his balance from the unexpected blow, looked at Jiang Chen in disbelief. How did you catch up to me? Nothing is impossible. Do you want to try again? Jiang Chen teased, stepping closer once more. 
refusing to be outdone, Tang San was convinced the hit was a fluke. With decades of experience under his belt, he couldn't accept being bested by a youngster. As Jiang Chen approached, Tang San's confidence returned, and he executed his ghostly footwork with even greater finesse, creating a blur of afterimages atop the mountain. To his dismay, Jiang Chen effortlessly kept pace, his movements simple yet effective, a stark contrast to Tang San's elaborate steps. Your footwork, though flashy, is ineffective against me, Jiang Chen commented, landing another kick. Tang San's heart raced as he found himself airborne once more, only to see Jiang Chen already positioned for the next move. As Tang San descended, Jiang Chen's eyes sparkled with anticipation, and he launched a punch. Control the crane, capture the dragon. Tang San managed to deflect Jiang Chen's fist, landing safely this time. The encounter left Tang San unsettled. Despite his superior agility and the centuries-old Tang Sek techniques, he couldn't shake off Jiang Chen, a mere child in comparison. During their chase, Tang San realized that Jiang Chen's movements, though lacking in finesse, were incredibly efficient, allowing him to maintain close pursuit despite Tang San's intricate maneuvers. How did you manage that? Tang San couldn't contain his curiosity any longer. Jiang Chen chuckled, a hint of pride in his voice. I developed this movement technique myself. His response left Tang San in awe. Jiang Chen's ability to adapt and overcome to create a method of movement that defied conventional wisdom was a testament to his dedication and ingenuity. Tang San, though outwardly frustrated, couldn't help but feel a secret thrill. However, his excitement quickly turned to irritation at the sight of Jiang Chen's smug smile. Humph, let's see if you can keep dodging me, Tang San declared, charging towards Jiang Chen with determination. After a short pursuit, Tang San came to a disheartened halt. Jiang Chen's movements were unpredictably swift, allowing him to effortlessly evade Tang San, leaving the latter trailing in his dust without so much as grazing Jiang Chen's clothing. Enough running. Let's settle this with a fist fight. You won't be able to dodge forever, Jiang Chen proposed with a chuckle. Ten minutes later, Tang San found himself lying on the ground, his face a canvas of bruises and swelling, his eyes vacant and filled with disbelief. He, the most gifted disciple of the Tang sect in a century, had been bested by a mere six-year-old child. The humiliation was one thing, but the thought of facing his family in such a state was another dilemma entirely. Chapter 29. Journey to Notting City Despite Zhang Chen's previous forgiven S, the sting of Tang San's earlier aggression lingered. Now, having triumphed over Tang San, Jiang Chen felt a profound sense of satisfaction wash over him. I'll be heading back first. You should hurry home too. Your father is probably waiting for you to join him for breakfast, Jiang Chen said, humming a tune as he descended the mountain, leaving Tang San to grapple with his defeat. Half an hour later, Tang San trudged home, his face still marred by bruises and dark circles under his eyes. Jiang Chen didn't hold back at all. He winced, touching the corner of his swollen mouth and inhaling sharply. The close quarters combat had left him no opportunity to utilize his hidden weapons, and without his speed advantage, he was no match for Zhang Chen's peculiar strength, which had quickly left him disoriented and defeated. After the fight, Tang San attempted to use his martial arts to heal his injuries, but to little avail. With no other option, he braced himself and headed home. Father, it's time for breakfast, he called out, wincing as he accidentally tugged at his injured mouth. Tang Hao emerged from the back room, yawning, only to freeze at the sight of Tang San's battered appearance. Huh? What's wrong with you? Tang Hao inquired, his brow furrowed in concern. No, it's nothing. I just accidentally fell, Tang San replied, his eyes shifting slightly. He found the idea of admitting his defeat to Jiang Chen too embarrassing to voice. Tang Hao, unconvinced by Tang San's clumsy attempt at deception, took a sip of his porridge and shook his head. The injury on Tang San's face clearly looked like it was the result of a punch. Did you get into a fight with someone? Tang San remained silent, unable to respond. Was it Jiang Chen? Tang Hao pressed, noticing his son's reluctance to speak. After finishing his porridge, Tang Hao set down the bowl and offered some advice. Losing a fight isn't shameful. What matters is that you find a way to win next time. He reminisced about his own childhood, being the undisputed champion among his peers in the Clear Sky School. 
It was a surprise to him that his son had been bested by someone of his own age, but realizing it was Jiang Chen, a child with exceptional strength and the first spirit ring, he understood why Tang San had faced difficulty. Tang San was taken aback by his father's understanding and supportive words, having braced himself for a reprimand. Understood, Dad, he nodded, internalizing Tang Hao's advice, determined to reclaim his honor. We must use the hidden weapon next time and prevent him from getting close, Tang San thought to himself, already strategizing for their next encounter. You don't need to work in the forge today. Take a rest and prepare for school tomorrow, Tang Hao said, heading to the bedroom to catch up on some sleep. Watching his father's retreating figure, Tang San felt a pang of sadness. The next morning, Zhang Chen rose early to prepare breakfast. After eating, he and Old Jack made their way to Tang San's house. Dressed in a new suit for their trip into the city, Old Jack looked particularly spry, and at his insistence, Zhang Chen also donned newer clothes. Little San, let's go. Your father won't be waking up to see you off, Old Jack announced upon entering. Tang San gestured for silence, scribbled a message on the ground with a piece of charcoal, grabbed his belongings, and walked out with a heavy heart. Noticing Tang San's bruised face, Old Jack couldn't help but ask, What happened to you, kid? Tang San glanced at Zhang Chen, then shook his head. It's nothing. I just had a little accident. You need to be more careful. Let's set off, Old Jack urged. Inside the house, Tang Hao rushed to the window, watching the trio depart with a mix of emotions. On the ground, Tang San had left a message. Dad, I'm leaving. Take care of yourself. Drink less, and don't forget the porridge in the pot. Shaking his head with a smile and eyes slightly moist, Tang Hao murmured, This kid. As the old man and two children made their way to Notting City, the warmth of the morning sun gradually lifted the sadness from Tang San's heart. Filled with curiosity about Soul Masters and the Academy, he bombarded Old Jack with questions, while Zhang Chen, familiar with the world of Dolo Dalu, listened intently. Xiao San, Xiao Chen, we're country folk. We must study hard at the Academy and prove ourselves, Old Jack said earnestly. Understood, Grandpa, they replied in unison. And Xiao Chen, with your talent surpassing Xiao San's, make sure to look out for him. Don't let anyone bully him, Old Jack added, though Zhang Chen found the idea amusing, knowing Tang San's capabilities. Okay, Grandpa, no one will dare to bully Xiao San, Zhang Chen assured him. As they approached, the imposing walls of Notting City came into view, leaving both Zhang Chen and Tang San in awe. For the first time, they set foot in Notting City. Max Yu Nuo, you probably didn't expect to see me alive. Well, surprise, I, Zhang Chen, am here to settle scores. A fierce determination surged within Zhang Chen's heart. After successfully passing the scrutiny of the city gate guards, the trio made their way into the city without issue. The Notting Jun, I or Soul Master Academy, was located in the western part of Notting City. After asking for directions several times, Old Jack, accompanied by his two young charges, finally arrived at the entrance of the academy. Despite being a junior academy in a relatively small city, the grandeur of Notting College was unmistakable, especially evident from its imposing entrance. The gate itself was an impressive structure, spanning 20 meters in width and reaching a height of 10 meters, all constructed from durable granite. The massive iron gates, each 20 meters wide, were forged from refined iron, hinting at the strength and resilience they were meant to symbolize. Peering through the iron bars, one could glimpse the towering trees and the outlines of majestic buildings within, alluding to the vastness and the prestige of the academy grounds. Prominently displayed above the gate were the four large characters spelling out Nodding College a testament to the institution's pride and a welcoming beacon to all who aspired to learn the ways of the soul masters. Zhang Chen was taken aback upon realizing that Jing Wuming's presence was detected within Notting College. He pondered, could it be that the assassin organization is concealed within Notting College? Despite scouring Jing Wuming's memories, Zhang Chen found no mention of such a connection. Jing Wuming had ascended to a higher level more than two months prior, likely having secured his second soul ring and achieved the status of a formidable soul master. This thought brought a smile to Zhang Chen's face, anticipating an intriguing life at Notting College. However, while he was aware of Jing Wuming's presence, 
Jing Wuming remained oblivious to his arrival. Upon their arrival at the college's entrance, Old Jack and Zhang Chen were halted by a gatekeeper. What business do you have here? Notting College is no place for country folk like yourselves. The gatekeeper's eyes sparkled with disdain and excitement, seeing an opportunity to exploit what he perceived as easy targets, perhaps even to extort them. Old Jack attempted to reason with the gatekeeper in hushed tones, only to be met with escalating arrogance. Zhang Chen, witnessing this scene, felt a surge of anger. The gatekeeper's contemptuous behavior was more palpable in person than it had been in any book. As the gatekeeper's insults grew more offensive, mocking the notion of blue-silver grass being innately filled with soul power and deriding their martial soul certificates, Jiang Chen's patience wore thin. The gatekeeper's mockery of Holy Soul Village as Beggar Village was the final straw for Old Jack, who took immense pride in his origins. Enraged, Old Jack confronted the gatekeeper, who provocatively dared him to retaliate. In a swift response to the gatekeeper's imminent push, Jiang Chen and Tang San acted simultaneously, with Jiang Chen reaching the gatekeeper first. He grabbed the gatekeeper's hand, preventing him from pushing Old Jack, who was frail and would have likely fallen from such a force. The gatekeeper, caught off guard and in pain from the forceful grip, threatened Jiang Chen. However, his threats were cut short by a commanding voice from behind. The gatekeeper's anger quickly dissolved into fear as he was sent flying back, crashing into the iron gate. Turning around, Jiang Chen saw a middle-aged man approaching. He appeared ordinary, in his fifties, with a somewhat disheveled demeanor. This must be the master, Jiang Chen thought to himself. The middle-aged man took the certificates from Old Jack, examined them, and then turned his attention to Jiang Chen and Tang San. Old man, leave these matters to me, he said, indicating he would handle the situation from there. Two children accompanied me, and I agreed to take them to register, the middle-aged man said. Ah, I'll be in your debt then, Old Jack replied, visibly surprised. You two must behave yourselves at the college, understand? I'll come to pick you up after the semester ends. Xiao Chen, make sure you look after Xiao San, all right? Understood, Xiao Chen responded, ensuring Old Jack could leave with peace of mind. The middle-aged man cast a brief glance at the concierge, his tone serious. This is the last time, if. His words trailed off abruptly. His attention was caught by the sight of a large patch of gray and black spreading up from the young man's neck, quickly covering his face. The young man sat frozen, unable to move or speak, his eyes rolling in sheer terror, the only sign of his fear. What's happening? The middle-aged man's brow furrowed in concern, and he turned to Jiang Chen. Young friend, you... He couldn't finish his sentence before Zhang Chen stepped forward, took the young man's hand, and began to draw out a tiny amount of corpse poison. In a moment of anger, Zhang Chen had injected a trace of the poison. Although it wasn't lethal, it was enough to incapacitate the young man for several months. Even after extracting the poison, the damage to the young man's body was significant, and recovery would take no less than a month. As the blackness receded from the young man's face, leaving him pale as death, he recoiled in fear at the sight of Jiang Chen standing before him. Meanwhile, the middle-aged man, who was holding Tang San, looked at Jiang Chen with a mix of surprise and curiosity, as if seeing something extraordinary for the first time. Let's proceed inside, he said with a smile to Jiang Chen, pulling Tang San along with him. Jiang Chen followed, now fairly certain that the man before him was Master Yu Xiaogang. The interaction was a testament to Jiang Chen's abilities, but also a reminder of the consequences of acting in haste. As they moved into the college, the dynamics between the characters hinted at the beginning of an intriguing journey, with Master Yu Xiaogang's interest in Jiang Chen setting the stage for future developments. Jiang Chen couldn't say he was fond of this character, and his current abilities had already surpassed Yu Xiaogang's theoretical knowledge. With the system at his disposal, the idea of revering someone as a master didn't appeal to him, especially since he found the other's emotional timidity quite off-putting. You two can address me as Grandmaster, as everyone else does, the Grandmaster said with a smile, before unveiling the secret of Tang San's dual spirits. Tang San's expression turned to one of shock, his hidden weapons at the ready. 
The secret of his martial spirit was known only to him and his father. Zhang Chen watched Tang San's tense demeanor with concern, thinking how absurd it would be if Tang San's hidden weapons were to accidentally discharge. The Grandmaster then proceeded to use his extensive research on the ten core competencies of Wu Hun and his vast theoretical knowledge to validate Tang San's possession of twin Wu Hun from various angles. Tang San, looking grave, suddenly stepped back, knelt, and bowed three times to the Grandmaster. Teacher, please accept me as your disciple, he implored with respect. The Grandmaster quickly helped him to his feet. Foolish boy, there's no need for such formalities with your teacher. I'm not your parent, after all. Teacher for a day, father for a lifetime, Tang San replied solemnly. The Grandmaster, touched by the gesture, laughed heartily. Very well, my judgment was indeed correct. His attention then shifted to Zhang Chen. In truth, he found Zhang Chen more intriguing than Tang San. With innate full soul power, a unique zombie martial soul, and his adept use of poison, Zhang Chen had sparked his intense curiosity. As someone obsessed with research and armed with a wealth of theoretical knowledge, he couldn't resist the allure of something so novel. You're Zhang Chen, correct? What about you? Would you consider me as your teacher? The Grandmaster asked, full of anticipation. He had just showcased a wealth of impressive theories and had identified Tang San's twin martial souls with ease. Surely, a youngster with little experience would be swayed by his profound knowledge. After all, he had already successfully taken on one apprentice. Jiang Chen shook his head. While the Grandmaster's theories were indeed comprehensive, they were tailored for the average individual. Jiang Chen, with his unique circumstances and the system, didn't fit this mold. I'm sorry, Master, but I have no intention of taking on a teacher at this time, Jiang Chen politely declined. The Grandmaster was momentarily taken aback, looking at Zhang Chen with a puzzled expression. Could it be that this young man fails to recognize the depth of my knowledge as the other did? Zhang Chen, the teacher is incredibly knowledgeable. He will surely provide us with the best guidance, Tang San interjected, hoping to persuade him. He recognized Zhang Chen's potential and wished to prevent him from taking unnecessary detours. Zhang Chen remained firm. It's really not necessary. I'm content to pursue my own path of cultivation. The Grandmaster frowned. Young friend, it's customary for every student to choose a mentor. My knowledge is considered second to none in this academy, and I don't take on disciples lightly. Given your talent, I'd hate to see it go to waste. You might regret this decision later. He looked at Zhang Chen with expectation, believing his words were clear enough for any sensible person to make the right choice. Jiang Chen, however, still shook his head, though a smile played on his lips. Master, are you certain that your theories are infallible? Chapter 31 Young People, You Must Learn to Exercise Restraint The Grand Master was taken aback once more, unsure of Jiang Chen's implication, yet he responded confidently. My theories are regarded as unparalleled. While I wouldn't claim them to be invincible, I'm confident no other teacher in this academy can match my expertise. The Grandmaster's statement radiated confidence, convincing even Tang San, who stood by his C. D. Jiang Chen raised an eyebrow. And what if your theory doesn't apply to me? He challenged. The master shook his head vehemently. Impossible. My research spans a vast array of subjects, and I've studied cases for nearly a century. The data I've gathered is highly authoritative. The ten core competencies of Wu Hun that I've identified cannot be mistaken. Jiang Chen pressed on. Let me ask you then, what is the maximum age for a soul master to absorb their first soul ring? The master, taken aback by Jiang Chen's knowledgeable inquiry, revised his opinion of him. Without hesitation, he answered, Based on the cases I've studied over nearly a hundred years, there are specific limits for the soul rings a soul master can absorb at each level. The limit for the first soul ring is 423 years. Let's make a wager, Zhang Chen proposed. If I can prove your theory wrong, I won't ask you to be my teacher. How does that sound? Agreed. The master accepted the challenge with enthusiasm, curious to see how Zhang Chen would disprove his theory. He had already mentally accepted Zhang Chen as his disciple. Zhang Chen took a step back and announced, Watch closely. As he spoke, a purple soul ring emerged from beneath his feet, gracefully encircling his body. This, how is this possible? 
the master exclaimed, his face a picture of astonishment. Tang San, observing the purple soul ring around Zhang Chen, was equally surprised. He didn't fully grasp the significance of the purple soul ring, but if he did, his reaction would surely be no less shocked than the master's. Zhang Chen retracted the soul ring and addressed the still-stunned master, so I don't need to become your disciple. And it's not just this soul ring. I'm confident that I can surpass your so-called limits with every soul ring I obtain in the future. Even Tang San regarded the master with a new perspective upon hearing Jiang Chen's declaration. The master, overcome with excitement, rushed forward and grabbed Jiang Chen's shoulders, shaking him. Tell me how you did it, he demanded. Jiang Chen frowned, taken aback by the master's fervent behavior. It seemed the situation had escalated unexpectedly. Ahem, I lost my composure, the master quickly realized, releasing Zhang Chen's shoulders. Let's head to the academic affairs office to get you registered. Reflecting on Zhang Chen's recent wager, the master realized the immense challenge in taking this young prodigy as a disciple. Yet, he was consumed with curiosity about how Zhang Chen had managed to cultivate a thousand-year-old soul ring, a feat that vastly surpassed his own three years of diligent study. The master couldn't help but question if Jiang Chen was even human. As the master walked away, Tang San's face betrayed a moment of hesitation, which didn't go unnoticed by Jiang Chen. Let's go, what are you waiting for? You're not having second thoughts about your teacher, are you? Jiang Chen teased. The master, overhearing this, paused briefly before continuing on, a smile of satisfaction gracing his lips. Tang San, after a moment of contemplation, reaffirmed his commitment with a traditional saying, teacher for one day, father for life, which only deepened the master's smile. Jiang Chen found Tang San's traditionalism amusing, yet understood the significance of the master in Tang San's life. He genuinely hoped Tang San would continue to learn under the master's guidance. Honestly, I don't think the master's teachings are incorrect. It's just that my abilities are somewhat extraordinary. I might be the only one capable of achieving what I have, Jiang Chen remarked with a hint of pride. Tang San, reflecting on Jiang Chen's words, realized there was truth in them. Jiang Chen had always been exceptional, even from a young age. This realization comforted Tang San somewhat. However, curiosity soon took over as he bombarded Jiang Chen with questions about his spirit ring and how he acquired it without hunting a spirit beast. Zhang Chen simply smiled and evaded the questions, changing the subject as they continued their journey. Upon reaching the academic affairs office, the master left Zhang Chen and Tang San to their own devices. The staff, upon learning of Tang San's mentorship under the master, couldn't help but express their skepticism. Zhang Chen, unfazed by the opinions of others, completed the necessary paperwork with Tang San and then set off towards the dormitory. Midway, Zhang Chen paused, suggesting Tang San proceed to the dormitory alone, as he had something else to attend to. Despite Tang San's curiosity, he respected Zhang Chen's privacy and headed off as instructed. Zhang Chen, following an intuitive pull, ventured into a small forest where he sensed the presence of Jing Wuming. There, he discovered Jing Wuming intensely practicing his swordsmanship, his movements precise and unwavering, despite the evident exhaustion. Upon noticing Zhang Chen, Jing Wuming's initially fierce demeanor softened, and he greeted his master with surprise, inquiring about his presence at Notting College. Jiang Chen explained his reason for being there, and learned that Jing Wuming had taken his advice to socialize more with his peers, hence his enrollment at the college. Finding a comfortable spot, Jiang Chen invited Jing Wuming to sit and catch up on recent events, particularly concerning the Wuhun Palace. Jiang Chen admitted his recent preoccupation with cultivation had kept him out of the loop regarding the palace's affairs, signaling his interest in Jing Wuming's insights. In Notting City, the atmosphere was tense yet expectant. Jiang Chen, with an air of authority, commanded respect from everyone around him, including Jing Wuming. Despite his reluctance, Jing Wuming remained standing until Jiang Chen's firm command to sit was issued. Once seated, Jing Wuming began to report on the current situation in Notting City. Master, the position of the head of the Marshall Soul Branch Hall in Notting City has been vacant for several months. It seems it will finally be filled soon. Really? 
Is it Matthew Nuo who's being considered? Zhang Chen inquired with interest. Jing Wuming nodded in confirmation. Yes, indeed, this decision should have been made quite some time ago. However, due to some complications at the higher levels, particularly with Zidian, the process was delayed. Only recently have they found the opert, unity to address this matter. In three days, envoys from the Wuhan Temple will arrive in Notting City to conduct the election ceremony for the new head of the branch hall, Jing Wuming continued. Given that Machino has been the senior figure in the Notting City branch hall, with most of the other deacons having been mentored by him, his election seems inevitable. It's unfortunate for Cece, though. She's so innocent, believing that Matthew Nuo was enchanted by her, unaware that she was merely being used by others, Zhang Chen reflected with a sigh. The one who truly deserves our sympathy is Brother Tao. By the way, you've been visiting Matthew Nuo's office frequently, haven't you? Zhang Chen shifted the topic, his tone indicating he was well aware of Jing Wuming's recent activities. Jing Wuming nodded, a hint of embarrassment in his demeanor. Yes, Master. In order to keep an eye on Matthew Nuo's actions for you, I've made it a point to visit daily. Zhang Chen's expression turned sly, a knowing smile playing on his lips. And how would you rate Maxiu Nuo and Cece's performance? Caught off guard by the question, Jing Wuming momentarily lost his composure before regaining it, albeit with a flushed face. It's quite remarkable, he admitted, albeit reluctantly. Standing up, Zhang Chen placed a reassuring hand on Jing Wuming's shoulder, offering a piece of advice with a serious tone. Young man, it's crucial to know where to draw the line. As the conversation concluded, the narrative shifted, hinting at new developments. Chapter 32, Boss Xiaowu, a newcomer arrives. This chapter transition suggested that the story was about to introduce new elements and characters, further complicating the intricate web of relationships and power dynamics within Notting City.